Hey, hi, hello, and welcome to, you guessed it, yet another video. And in this one, we're going to be going through keyframe animations. They were announced at DubDub 2023, and they make complex animations so much easier. We're going to be building an animation that looks something like this. Now you can see the bouncing ball, it's a cool effect. It looks like it's squashing, bouncing. It's got that spring and bouncy animation. So I'm gonna show you how to do that step by step. It's actually not as hard as you think, so let's get into it. The first thing I'm gonna do is create a new Swift UI view. I'm going to call it keyframe animation view. And I'm going to create my image view with a system image. And we'll use the check mark circle fill. Let's have a look what that looks like. And there we have it. There's our check mark circle fill. I'm going to make it resizable, give it a foreground style of let's say orange, and let's limit the frame to 100 by 100. So we'll go frame width, height, and we'll keep them at 100 each. So now we've got the check mark image sitting in the middle of our screen. What we want to do now is animate our check mark circle so it looks like it's bouncing. Now there's two components to this bounce. There's the vertical translation and there's the vertical stretch. Now really, you can build this bounce animation without including the vertical stretch and just focus on vertical translation. But I thought, given that we're learning about keyframe animations and its new capabilities, why not go all out and make it look realistic? So to get started with keyframe animations, we first need to create a struct that defines the keyframe properties. So, so these will be the properties that we want to animate throughout the animation. So let's go ahead and create a struct and call it animation properties. We want a Y translation and we'll give it a default value of zero because it obviously starts at zero. And then we also want a vertical stretch and we'll also leave that at one. So the vertical stretch will be a scale. So obviously at first the ball is going to be the full height. Now you are not going to believe how easy it is to add these keyframe animations. It's as simple as this. We're gonna go ahead and say keyframe animator. So the first thing we have is the content and that's going to be the content we're modifying at each stage in the animation. Value is the value that Swift provides us with at every point in the animation. So that's also the interpolated values between the ones that we specify. And we'll leave this empty for now. We also don't need this. And this is where we'll specify our keyframes. Now, the first thing we wanna do is attach modifiers to our content based on the keyframe and the animation at that point. So we're going to say we want to scale vertically. So we'll say content.scale effect. And we only wanna scale across the Y axis and it's going to be value dot vertical stretch. I also want to anchor to the bottom. So essentially if the ball is like this, it'll squeeze like that, the way a ball works. So you basically have a floor here and it's just squeezing this way. If I did it without the bottom anchor, it would just be going like this. And we don't want that because it's not realistic. And then the next thing we want to do is offset. And again, our Y value, and we're going to say value dot Y translation. And now we specify the keyframes. Now what you wanna do is create a keyframe track for every property you wanna animate. And within that keyframe track, you're going to specify what the different keyframes are. One thing I like to do is provide an overall animation duration and then create the keyframes as a percentage or fraction of that total duration. It keeps everything smooth in sync and makes sure that each track is pretty much in line. In my opinion, it gives you the best animation. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is create a total duration variable and I'll make that equal to two. So our total animation will be around two seconds. So we'll go ahead and create our first keyframe track and it's going to have a path for our vertical stretch. Now there are a few types of keyframes that you can use. I'm going to use spring and cubic keyframes because I feel like that works best with the bounce animation, but there's also linear and move. So you can play around with those, see what works best for the animation that you're trying. So I'm going to go ahead and create my first keyframe and it'll be a spring keyframe for the initial bounce. So I'll say spring keyframe and it's going to go to around 0.6. So the first initial down bounce and the duration of that is going to be, let's say total duration multiplied by 0 0.15. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy this. I'll change this to be a cubic keyframe and then this will bounce it back to its full height. And this will also be 0.15 of a second. So you can see it doing some bounce over there. I want another cubic keyframe. This time it's going to slowly start stretching up. This one will probably go for around 0.3 seconds. Actually, I'll make it 0.4. So right now we have 0 0.15, 0 0.15 and 0 0.4. At the moment, it adds up to 0.7. 
what you want to do is try and make sure that you keep what you want to do is try and make sure that your keyframe durations add up to one if you're using my strategy of a total duration. This way you'll make sure that your animation actually does go for the duration that you said. So we've got 0.3 seconds to play with here. I'm going to make another cubic animation and we'll say 0.15 and this time I'll bounce it to 0.1, a slow ease back and then I'll end on a spring animation for the final bounce. And this will return it back to its full height again and take 0.15 seconds. So now you can see it's doing a bounce and it looks like it's in midair and then comes back and bounces again. And you can see it's doing that. Now we're really close and now we just need to animate its vertical translation. So we'll go ahead and create another keyframe track. Again, the key path here will be Y translation this time. For the vertical translation, this one's a lot easier. We're just going to start at zero, then move up a hundred, stay for a bit for that little like peak period and then drop back down. I'm also going to have all of these as cubic keyframes. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy one from here. This is a cubic keyframe. It's going to start at zero and the duration will be about 0.1. Now we're going to skyrocket the animation up. So minus a hundred. So now there's a vertical translation and this will be 0.3. I'll have another one of those. Now it stays up there for 0.3. And the reason I have another minus hundred keyframe is this is giving the ball some time to shrink back at that point so it can come back down and then we end at zero and obviously we need to fill in the remaining duration which is 0 0.3 and there you have it you have an animation that looks like a bouncing ball really if you wanted to play around with this you could change this to be five seconds and now it's a really heavy ball that just pushes up and then comes back down and if you wanted it to be really fast you could have 0 0.5 seconds and then you have a really fast bouncing ball. Now I'm really excited to see what you can build with keyframe animations because it's opened up a world outside of Lottie files and Lottie animations and a whole bunch of other animation frameworks that we've been using to achieve something similar to this. As you saw, it's like literally 30 lines of code and it's also super simple, but like you saw, you define your properties, use keyframe animator, define your tracks and the keyframes, and there you have it. I think what will really set you apart when it comes to keyframe animations is how much you play around with the animations and try and really get those animations nice and smooth and as realistic as possible. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any other requests, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I will catch you in the next one. Peace. I don't care about your stories, I don't care about